Welcome to Morning Prayer this Tuesday morning. We hope and pray that you're finding these uh, times of study and prayer helpful. And today we continue to pray through the liturgy set for this time for Thy Kingdom Come. If you're new to this type of service, let me just encourage you to not worry about it seemingly being like rote or going through the motions. This is about allowing the Word of God to soak deep in us. So let's prepare ourselves, shall we? O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be praise and glory forever. As the Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray then with one heart and mind. For as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of Christ, uh, the presence of Christ, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today our reading comes, our psalm comes from Psalm 99. Let the Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exo exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The King is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, and though you punished their misdeeds, we exalt you, the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. As been our practice, we're going to continue to say the canticle together that reminds us about the faithfulness of God. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. So we're going to continue as well with looking at some words from the Old Testament. Today we're looking at the first book of Samuel, chapter 10, and the first 10 verses. So Samuel chapter 10. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you leader over his inheritance? When you leave me today, you will meet two men near Rachel's tomb at Zelzar on the border of Benjamin. And they will say to you, The donkeys that you set out to look for have been found. And now your father has stopped thinking about them and is worried about you. He is asking, what shall I do about my son? Then you will go on from there until you reach the great tree of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there. One will be carrying three young goats, another three loaves of bread, and another a skin of wine. They will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread, which you will accept from them. After that, you will go to Gilbeah of God, where there is a Philistine outpost. 
and as you approach the town you will meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with lyres, tambourines, flutes and harps. They're being played before them and they will be prophesying. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power and you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Go down ahead of me to Gilgal, and I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. But you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. As Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart. And all these signs were fulfilled that day. And when they arrived at Gilbeah, a procession of prophets met him. The Spirit of God came upon him in power and he joined in their prophesying. As we reflect upon those words from the Old Testament, we want to allow the Holy Spirit to settle in us today. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow, and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. So we're going to say together the words of the Benedictus, which is the song of Zechariah. We start with this refrain. Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. For Christ has gone up on high, and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. So we're going to spend some time in prayer now, praying for today and all the things that you might have to do, the people that you might have to speak to, uh, and how, you know, the things that need doing. We're also going to pray for our world and what's going on in it, obviously with the coronavirus being uppermost there, but also about the economy and politicians and those in leadership, how we can pray for God's wisdom and for the church. And also, of course, don't forget for those five people that you hopefully have been thinking about and praying for every day for them to come to know Jesus. So shall we pray? So first and foremost, we pray for the day. So Lord, as you set this day before us, we pray for all that it contains. Would you lead us and guide us, we pray. Would you equip us and give us both energy and words. For the times when we need to be silent, would you still our tongue. For the times when we need to speak, give us words. And for those times of action, Father, give us energy and readiness. So we pray for the world and its needs. And in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, Lord, we pray for those who lead the governments of the world. Would you give them wisdom? Would you give justice and care? And would you help them as leaders to love the people for whom they serve? We pray for the world's economies 
particularly our own economy here in the UK. And as we hear of rising unemployment, Lord, would you give strength and calm and peace to those who find themselves unemployed? Would you give them what they need at this time, we pray? And we pray for the church and her life. Lord, we thank you that your church is the herald of the age, that your church brings the good news, that your church is a mirror of your body as we serve those around us. And we pray for those five people that we list today. And we think of them individually. And we pray for the Holy Spirit to work in the lives of those five. And we pray for the specific things that each of those might face today, that they may know your strength and your guidance. So as we hold those people in prayer, let me pray this collect for thy kingdom come. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we join with the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we draw this time to a close, I hope and pray that you found it useful and as it sets you up for the day, I pray that then you can rest easy in the evening by listening to our evening prayer slot at nine o'clock. So as we conclude, may the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>